good morning good afternoon good evening uh, to one and all who have gathered here uh, thanks for joining in this edition of idol foundation idol overview uh, my name is suraj gp and i'm going to be your facilitator for today's session just a brief introduction about myself my name is suraj gp i am the managing director for top solutions and also play a role of board of director for itsm of india i have overall 14 plus years of experience in different facets of service management um being an it service management consultant a practitioner a business um a consultant project and program manager um and have done implementations in it service management across different geographies it's a uh, a great delight to be here to share some of my perspectives to aspirants into this space before we start um, i wanted to stick with some poll questions um so if you could uh, be kind enough to answer that um so there are three questions here uh so please uh, uh look at this and vote to which geography do you belong to Uh, americas europe australia and new zealand asia and middle east or africa so if you could just uh, um so we have about 73 percent voted we'll just give a a few more seconds for people to vote okay so we have uh, 77 percent 78% uh in the asia and middle east and 21% in america thanks for that so we move on to the second poll question uh what is your exposure to idle if you've heard about itil uh is it are you a beginner or an intermediate or advanced or you have no idea about uh idle uh this is uh required because we will when we pace the session we will plan it accordingly so that you have uh, the required insights to do that so we'll just give a few more seconds for people to um, look at it so we have about 87% voted which has 51% say they have no idea uh, 33% as beginner and 13% as intermediate 3% as advanced thanks for that the last and final uh, poll question is what is the current industry that you work manufacturing retail it healthcare constructions or others you know if you have anything um related to to that okay so we have about 97% in it so thanks for that so we'll get this moving uh so today we are going to discuss about ITIL and IT service management we're going to talk about ITIL V3 foundation and what are the certifications that can take you to the expert we're going to talk about what are the career opportunities and IT service management landscape uh we will talk about the edul reka training program and schedule and how is it different and what can you expect and we will then go with q and a so we are into service management so um before we get on i want to talk about itil now itil stands for it infrastructure library so primarily itil was a best practice framework that was developed for infrastructure management um aspects so let's talk about what you mean by infrastructure management now if you look at any it services that we are providing or any services that we are providing there is a whole lot of infrastructure that is required so if you look at there is a server for example the email service that you are having has got an exchange server and that is connected through your network in terms of lan wan um that is local area network or wide area network you also have virtual uh, environments uh, vms we have security aspects that means 
opening the firewall ports, making sure that the required access is being given. You all have different servers like Windows servers, unique servers and boxes that are where your applications or services are being hosted. Storage, we are talking about big data, we are talking about large storage in terms of your mailboxes, all uh, elements that you are able to store in databases and uh, various file systems. We are also talking about monitoring, alerting and notifications. That means if you have your own mission critical systems that are delivering these services, then we need to know whether your services are up and running. Is there something which is uh, a down? That means can I raise a ticket to resolve it? So if you look at it broadly, these are some of the areas what I mean to see as far as infrastructure management. Now, the infrastructure management, so ITIL is going to talk about best practice processes in which these infrastructure components can be addressed. So for example, if a server goes down, how quickly are you able to revert or get back the server up and running? What are the issues that we face in terms of resolving it within the agreed timelines? So that these best practice processes helps to manage the IT infrastructure better. Now, if you look at from an organization need, and that's the context that we are coming here as to why we need to be ITIL uh, certified or what is the need for you as a professional to get yourself qualified as an ITIL foundation level or intermediate or expert. If you look at the, any organization that you work for an employer, they want to look at building highly effective workforce. Now the highly effective workforce cannot be developed until you have the option of getting the right staff, the right roles with the required capability skills and competencies to deliver. So, so the organizations are continuously evaluating what do we have today, what do we need tomorrow and how do we improve. So they are looking out for professionals who are certified, who have the required knowledge to deliver services seamlessly and build more customer satisfaction. So that is the order of the day in which we are understanding the context of the organization and there is a need felt to get ourselves trained and certified in some of these elements so that you can deliver your work much efficiently to the satisfaction of your seniors. So what is ITIL or ITIL? ITIL stands for IT Infrastructure Library. So it's a best practice framework. So there are different versions. It started from version one and now we are into version three and the latest is the 2011 version. The primary objective of having this best practice framework is focused on delivering superior customer service using streamlined processes. Now, if I give a simple example, if you are calling some support teams and uh, you want an immediate response and you want them to follow up and say, okay, this is was your issue that you reported. This is a ticket number and we will get this resolved within, uh, within four hours. And then they call you back and say, this ticket is resolved. Can you please check and confirm? So how does it make that you get a consistent way of um, addressing your issues, giving a proper feedback mechanism and close looping it so that you are able to enjoy the services that you get. So it is not only uh, with IT, this uh, framework or best practice framework can be adopted and has been adopted widely across all industries that we talked about healthcare, construction, telecom, IT and so on and so forth. So if you look at what is ITIL version 3 contains, it was developed by OGC, which is the Office of Government Commerce, which is based out of um, UK London. Um, so it's a non-profit organization that, that was primarily doing this and then now it's been the, the owners of ITIL now is Axelos. Now Axelos own the intellectual property for the ITIL core volumes. Now there are five core volumes. So on the right hand side, you're able to see some big boxes. So it starts with service strategy. Then you have service design, which is the red, red arrow. 
then we have service transition, then service operation and encompassing that is the continual service improvement. So these are five core volumes or core books that ITIL V3 comprises and every uh, section has got underneath processes. Okay, so we will go into that detail a little bit. And from an exam perspective, it starts with ITIL V3 foundation, that is the course that you are going to get enrolled. So you get a basic idea of all the uh, core volumes that we talked about strategy, design, transition, operation. Then you can go about making yourself to an intermediate, expert and then a master. Now these are exams that are, uh, that are taken uh, to get yourself qualified. They are typically multiple choice questions that you can go and uh, appear yourself. So these are starting as I told you strategy, design, transition, operations and continual service improvement. So underneath every um, service there are uh, processes. So for example, just to give you one example, service operation. That means you are reporting an issue. For example, you are subscribed to a broadband service. Now in your system that broadband is not working. So you call up the telecom operator and ask them, my broadband service or I am not able to access internet. Um, so you call the telecom provider. The telecom provider says, okay, this is an incident. So I raise a ticket and says, this is a priority ticket. This is the time window that you will get resolved. So the entire process from raising a ticket to getting it resolved will be done as part of incident management. Like that we have several processes that will address from the starting point to the end um, objective. So what is, we talked about ITIL which is a best practice framework. There is also something called as IT service management. Now IT service management per se is talking about the implementation aspect using these best practice framework. You cannot implement ITIL, but you can use those best practice processes and then go there and implement in your organization. So when I say in your organization, you are going to implement the best practice process, that means you use a set of core policies, you have structured processes, you use people, process, technology to deliver outcomes, right? So IT service management is the practical aspect of leveraging the best practice framework, which is ITIL, into your workplace to deliver appropriate business outcomes. Now, if you look at the IT service management and if you look at doing business with some of the service providers or vendors, how do you ensure that they are able to deliver consistent quality of service with streamlined processes and stuff. So ISO IEC, which is the International Standard Organization, International Electoral Committee, which is talking about a 20,000 standard, which will certify your organizations on best practice processes. So all the, uh, there are 14 processes that will get certified, saying that they are compliant with the ITIL uh, best practice processes. And so your organization gets a certificate called ISO IC 20,000. Now this ISO IC 20,000 is for an organization for a service that you provide. Okay. So that could be done for an internal IT or it could be delivered for your external customers. Now the essential element of looking at service management is looking at four key aspects. We have called it as four P's of service management. So if you want to deliver a service, you need to have people. That means you need to have people with the right skills, competencies, attitude. You need to have well-defined process. That means each and every step or issue that has been handled is handled consistently the same manner across the organization. And you will use tools. Products means tools. So you can use your own service management tool. You can uh, technologies to help deliver business outcomes. And you also need partners. For example, you have, uh, you are a service provider and you will have partners who are providing network, who are providing infrastructure, who are providing uh, HR services. So all these people together will make, deliver the service to your end customers. At the end of the day, we are all here 
to serve our customers. So if we want to have good customer service, we need to focus on all these four elements to deliver the best customer service for our uh, customers. It could be internal customers or it could be external customers. Now, this is just a, a segment in which your IT services are looking like. So because, so you have services like enterprise computing services, we have infrastructure security services, you have network services and end user services. So uh, if you are from an infrastructure management background, these are the underneath layers of how they manage these services. So for example, you can manage the entire databases of your customer. So you have a data center which contains all these servers, network, um, storage, all that stuff you monitor and see how this works. Similarly, you can manage your desktops, laptops, um, and, and Active Directory, uh, network meaning wireless, uh, local area network, so all that stuff. So with a service portfolio, you can make this ITIL based managed services, and then you start defining best practice process of how you will handle these services um, to ensure that everything is delivered on time with a required amount of efficiency in meeting the agreed targets. Okay. So in terms of landscape, you can be doing internal IT or external IT. In that internal IT, we are talking about um, you know, catering to uh, some of the your own internal employees. So you can implement process, you can develop tools, um, and you can provide support. Someone is saying they are support specialist. You can support your network, database, infra. You can also do consulting or best practices of how to streamline process. You can also do audits and so on and so forth. So these are some of the landscape mode that you have. If you look at an org structure, if you look at an ITIL or IT service management based organization, you have the head of IT and then you have service manager, which is called IT service manager. Then you have development manager who's looking at more of application development, web development. And then there is a strategy manager who takes care of the account management, which is relationship management, procurements, architecture. If you look at IT service manager, he typically has the support teams and the delivery team. So all the support related processes are underneath. So for example, the service desk, which are sitting and then handling those uh, aspects and uh, trying to find what are the tickets that are coming, how this has been resolved. Repeatedly, if you're having incidents, they look at a root cause analysis, that is the problem management and so on and so forth, right? So this is typically how in organization, you have these IT I'll process managers uh, functioning in, in some of these organizations. So this is just an example, but there could be different permutations and combinations of what it is. Now, if you move on further, uh, and that comes us to a point, how is certification being organized? Now, if you look at, look at the way certifications are being organized, there are basic level, then the intermediate level, and then the advanced level. So I talked about ITIL B3 foundation, then we have ITIL um, intermediate, and then we have the advanced or advanced diploma. So the certification level also improves over a period of from foundation to intermediate to advanced. So in foundation, that is the ITIL B3 foundation, we will look at the basic stuff. That means looking at what's the knowledge, what's the uh, uh, level of basic knowledge about all these processes, the core volumes, the five core volumes, and know exactly what is what. So you get a overview of all these processes and how it is used and how is it getting benefited for an organization. Then what happens, you start specializing yourself. So if you look at yourself getting trained, like it could be, when you were in your uh, schooling and then you went to your college, then you do specialization as masters, right? And you specialize in your respective field of, let's say, mechanical engineering, chemical engineering, or accountancy, or whatever that might be in your field, you do a specialization. So when you come to intermediate, you then decide whether I want to go in a capability route or a life cycle route, which I will talk. But then that will be in the second division. So 
in the second intermediate round, you will be able to comprehend. That means you will be able to apply and understand using the knowledge that you have gained and see what are the scenarios that this will be implemented. And in the third layer, which is the advanced layer, you will start applying those concepts into the actual scenarios. So that's more of the next level of advance. So you slowly increase your level of understanding, knowledge and applying those knowledge that you've gained into this workplace. Now, in the current scheme of certification that you have, and I just wanted to give you a roadmap as to where do we start and where do we go, is you have the foundation certificate, which is the class that you're going to attend. Um, and this is going on a credit based system. So when you clear the first ITIL foundation, you get two credits or we can call it as, call it as points, right? And then in the intermediate layer, there are two divisions. We are going to talk about that in a little while, which is called a service life cycle model. Now we, we have the uh, system in terms of uh, looking at uh, a life cycle module, which means every module, there are five modules that is service strategy, design, transition, operation, CSI, that will get three credits each. And then you have the uh, life cycle module, which we will talk about in a while, which will again get every module will be four credits. But irrespective of what you can pick mix and match, or you can do in, in one of them, like either fully life cycle or fully uh, the capability module, then you go to the managing through life cycle. That is a, that is a module that everybody have to uh, uh, do that. And then you become an expert. So if you, if you accumulate credits and if you make 22 credits, uh, then you will be able to do that. So I will see if I could share this as part of the module. Uh, later, I'll, I'll come back. Uh, now, let me know whether you're able to uh, see this. So this is uh, right now we are in uh, the capability stream module. Um, now capability stream meaning RCV, which is called release control validation. Then uh, OSA, which is uh, the um, talking about all the uh, access event management, incident management, then we have SOA, which is service offering and agreement. Then we have PPO, which is planning, protection and optimization. So there are little modules, so you don't need to worry about it. We will go in detail when we go to the section of in the foundation. So we will talk about all these modules. So at the end of the foundation, you would have had an understanding of all the respective process of what is the goal of it, what are the different roles, what is the process look like, what's the start point, and how it is interfacing with all these process in due course. Okay, so this is called the capability stream um, in, in, in picture. Now, if you look at it, how do you opt for? Do you go through a lifecycle module or do you want to go through a capability stream? So if people know about the version two, they had something called as a practitioner course. So it's like a subject matter expert. So it's kind of deep diving into the current role. Some, some people do, are into release management or testing or specialization on those. So it's more of a implementation consideration. You will go through the capability stream. Whereas if it is life cycle, it is executing and implementing a complete stage of service life cycle. That is from strategy, you develop certain design, then you do a transition and then you operate and then you look at continual service improvement. So in capability stream, you will have more prescriptive and deep dive inputs, activities, concepts. And the other one in life cycle is more for consultants who will manage the client end to end. So as I told you in capability stream, it's more of a subject matter expert. Now what do you do day in and day out? And in life cycle, it's more broader perspective that you get an end-to-end -end perspective for a client to understand all how these process relate with each other. Now, let's move on. Now, some of the job opportunities that you will have 
as part of uh, this uh, exercise is you will have a process owner or a process manager, a process consultant. So you can have different uh, opportunities that you will get by becoming yourself certified in this journey. Now many of the people whom I interact ask them, okay, I've con completed foundation, intermediate expert, what does it mean? How can this be leveraged and utilized in the place that we are talking about? That's how this works across, okay? So these are some of the opportunities where you can go yourself, get yourself associated and then play those roles in, in different industries. And also like uh, support staff, that means handling first level support, second level support, third level support, all that opportunities will also be provided for people who are certified and have knowledge in, the, in these areas. Now what really matters, you know, at the, at, at, at the point that we are talking about is what kind of attitude and value you have and do you have business and professional knowledge as to how it works? Do you have personal skills? That means in business and professional, you have accumulated those insights from an aspect that you have knowledge, that is you are foundation certified, you have understanding of the customer pain areas, you understand the required communication aspects, the collaboration aspects, working with diversified teams, and then start using that as a basis to communicate and deliver value. Personal skills, that means ability to handle irate customers. Now many of the times what happens is the customer else at you where you are not actually responsible for the issue. There was some gap, delay, or there was some miscommunication. People have, um, have, have misinterpreted. But that's something that you will have to be patient, calm, composed. You have to accept or apologize and then deliver what it is there. Sometimes the customer wants to vent out his feelings. So you should have those skills to do that. And importantly, you also need to know in your industry, if you are developing a career within service management. What are the people who are working? Who is doing what? What is the kind of roadmap that they have? How people have gone through their journey? For example, if you looked in LinkedIn profile, you know exactly how they have started their journey in service management and how they have grown up in the, in the stream so that you can actually use that as your basis to uh, do that. Now, I'll take a look at uh, questions at this moment. There are a few questions that have come across. So if you have any questions, just keep posting. Uh, let me move on. Um, so this is looking about uh, contacts and who is who. Uh, there are forums there where you can be a part of it, which is the IT Service Management Forum, where it uh, is for a non-profit organization, uh, where you have different professionals in the field of service management, be process consultants, tool consultants, and people who understand these elements to do that. LinkedIn, there are a lot of groups that you can opt for. If you are in Facebook, there is a group called Back to ITSM, which is uh, basically having practitioners. We have people across the globe who can help each other if you have any issues in the way that you opt for. So do not think just to do a certificate for the sake of doing certificate, but look at how this is going to help you in building your career roadmap and how this is going to take you to the next order of doing uh, business or delivering outcomes and then that will help you to leverage best of your ability to do that okay so finally uh, before we end I wanted to just show you um, what matters and community building these are topics we will cover service management practice strategy design transition operation all the process underneath there are 26 processes that are in ITIL v3 we will cover all these in the uh, in the um, in the ITIL Foundation, how it works? It's live online class. So at any time you can, I mean, you can log in to the online class and do it at the comfort of your own desk, relaxedly. The class recordings are recorded and available. And after that, you get 24 cross 7 post class support. And for you to play across before taking the exam, you have model wise quiz. You can do project work, and then you get verifiable certificate. We also do. We also do a kind of mentoring. So if you need 
some more additional things to do that uh, we can get this across done. So I will uh, pause here if there are any final questions and then we wrap it up for the day. Any final questions if you have in terms of Vital Foundation, how this helps, what is the career roadmap? Any more questions? Okay, with that, uh, thanks a lot for being here and we hope that uh, the session was useful. This session is recorded, so it should be available. You can reach out to people if you have any other further questions. And I look forward to you, uh, to seeing you in my foundation class. Um, uh, we will be talking more of practical ideas and we will be able to relate your work, something meaningfully to get your good career advancement. Thanks a lot for all your time and have a good day.